Schwerer Gustav a giant railway-mounted gun had been used by the Germans to bombard Paris during the First World War. The concept of such a colossal weapon was revived in 1936, when Adolf Hitler asked the head of Krupp armaments what type of gun could destroy the fortifications of the Maginot Line. The gun was designated Schwerer Gustav. The 80 cm gun weighed 1,350 tons and could project a 7-ton shell 29 miles. It was completed too late for the German army's attack on France in May 1940. The artillery unit to which it was allocated in January 1942 named the gun Dora. It fired 47 rounds against the city of Sevastopol in the Soviet Union wearing out the barrel in the process. The second gun produced by Krupp, Schwerer Gustav II, was never used in action. Schwerer Gustav II was placed in storage in March 1943 at Rugenwald, an artillery firing range. The increased efficacy of aerial bombardment in the Second World War made these large guns obsolete. The gun was designed in preparation for the Battle of France, but was not ready for action when that battle began, and in any case the Wehrmacht's Blitzkrieg offensive through Belgium rapidly outflanked and isolated the Maginot Line static defenses, which were then besieged with more conventional heavy guns until French capitulation. Schwerer Gustav was the largest caliber rifled weapon ever used in combat and, in terms of overall weight, the heaviest mobile artillery piece ever built. It fired the heaviest shells of any artillery piece. It was surpassed in caliber only by the unused British Mallets mortar and the American Little David bomb testing mortar, both at 36 inches, 91.5 centimeters, but was the only one of the three to be used in combat. In 1934, the German Army High Command, Aber Commando de Heers, OKH, commissioned Krupp of Essen to design a gun to destroy the forts of the French Maginot Line that were nearing completion. The gun's shells had to punch through 7 meters of reinforced concrete or one full meter of steel armor plate, from beyond the range of French artillery. Krupp engineer Eric Muller calculated that the task would require a weapon with a caliber of around 80 centimeters, 31 in, firing a projectile weighing 7 tons, 15,000 pounds, from a barrel 30 meters, 98 feet, long. The weapon would have a weight of over 1,000 tons, 1,100 short tons. The size and weight meant that to be at all movable it would need to be supported on twin sets of railway tracks. Krupp built a test model in late 1939 and sent it to the Hillersleben proving ground for testing. Penetration was tested on this occasion. Firing at high elevation, the 7,100 kg, 15,700 pounds, shell was able to penetrate the specified 7 meters of concrete and the 1 meter armor plate. When the tests were completed in mid-1940 the complex carriage was further developed. Alfred Krupp, after whose father the gun was named, personally hosted Hitler at the Rugenwald Proving Ground during the formal acceptance trials of the Gustav gun in early 1941. Two guns were ordered. The first round was test-fired from the commission gun barrel on September 10, 1941 from a makeshift gun carriage at Hillersleben. In November 1941, the barrel was taken to Rugenwald, now Darlowo, Poland, where eight further firing tests were carried out using the 7,100 kg armor piercing shell out to a range of 37,210 meters, 23.12 miles. In combat, the gun was mounted on a specially designed chassis, supported by eight bogies on two parallel railway tracks. Each of the bogies had five axles, giving a total of 40 axles, 80 wheels. Krupp named the gun Schwerer Gustav, Heavy Gustav, after the senior director of the firm, Gustav Krupp von Bolen owned Halbach. The gun could fire a heavy concrete piercing shell and a lighter high explosive shell. An extremely long range rocket projectile was also planned with a range of 150 kilometers, 93 miles, that would require the barrel being extended to 84 meters, 276 feet. The siege of Sevastopol was the gun's first combat test. 4,000 men in five weeks were needed to get the gun into firing position, 500 men were needed to fire it. Installation began in early May, and by the 5th of June the gun was ready to fire. The gun was then dismantled and moved to the northern part of the Eastern Front, where an attack was planned on Leningrad. The gun was placed 30 kilometers, 18.6 miles, from the city near the railway station of Taitsi. The gun was fully operational when the attack was cancelled. The gun then spent the winter of 1942-43 near Leningrad. On April 14, 1945, one day before the arrival of US troops, Schwerer Gustav was destroyed to prevent its capture. 
On April 22, 1945, its ruins were discovered in a forest 15 kilometers, 9.3 miles, north of Auerbach and about 50 kilometers, 31 miles, southwest of Chemnitz. In summer 1945 Schwerer Gustav was studied by Soviet specialists and in autumn of the same year was transferred to Merseburg, where the Soviets were gathering German military material. Thereafter, the trail of the gun was lost. In March 1945, Dora was transferred to Grafenwehr and was blown up there on April 19, 1945. The debris was discovered by American troops sometime after the discovery of Schwerer Gustav's ruins. The debris was scrapped in the 1950s. Part of the third, 52-centimeter, gun was found after the war in the Krupp production facilities in Essen. The world's largest Dora ensemble is located in the Military History Museum of the Bundeswehr in Dresden.